So you spent the $300 to $350 on the new Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. The best thing you can do is get the most out of it, and that's why in this video I'm going to show you everything you can do with the new Magic Keyboard and Trackpad for the iPad Pro. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna kick things off with the basics. We will be going over shortcut keys, trackpad gestures, tips and tricks, as well as settings to customize some of the buttons and to modify the keyboard to work exactly like you want. There's timestamps in the description of the video and the top comments, so you can skip ahead to exactly what you wanna learn. But we're gonna start off here with some of the basics. All right, so if you're familiar with any trackpad, you know how they pretty much work scrolling with one finger to go left, right, up and down. Clicking is as simple as just hovering over any app or link and then just clicking once and they'll open up. You also have the force click abilities as well. So if you click and hold on an application, you'll see extra options appear. You can also hold longer and bypass that. So continue holding and you'll see they'll start shaking. You can click the X's to delete those applications as well. To drag anything, for example, on our home screen here, if we wanted to drag an app, just click and then just drag it where you would like as well. You'll also see those X's do appear so you can move your applications and delete them. Now we'll just lock our iPad here. And from the lock screen to wake it up, all you have to do is click once on the trackpad or click any button on the keyboard. I'll show you both once on the trackpad here, once on the keyboard right there. So either way, you can wake it up. You'll notice that Face ID activated at the top. So now all I have to do is click a second time on the keyboard or the trackpad and it'll open up. Face ID activated, I'll click again. It unlocks the iPad. Now, while you're using various applications, you'll notice that the dock disappears. Now you can bring up the dock anytime just by scrolling with one finger, pulling down, and you'll see the dock appears. You can click any of the applications in your dock or just click away to return back to the page you were on. Now, if you do pull down to open the dock, you can go back to your home screen just by continuing and scrolling down one more time and you're back to your home screen. Now, anytime, whenever you're in an application, you can always go back to your home screen just by swiping up with three fingers. So we're in our settings application. We'll take three fingers and swipe up. So it works exactly how it would if you were to use your finger on the iPad by swiping up, but you're just using three fingers and swiping up from the bottom and you're back to your home screen. Now, if you ever want to bring up your control center, you can hover your mouse over the percentage icon and battery, and then just give it a click. It opens up the control center just like it would normally on the iPad. Additionally, if you want to open up notification center, just take your cursor and you want to scroll up with one finger on the trackpad all the way to the top of the screen and kind of scroll past it. It opens up the notification center. Now, while in scrollable applications, for example, this website here, if you want to scroll up and down, you're going to take two fingers and you're just going to scroll. As you can see, pulling upwards on the trackpad brings the mouse down. If you do want to go left and right, it works the same way. So if we click on the learn more tab and we want to go back, we'll take two fingers and we can just scroll to the right. It'll bring us back, scroll to the left. It'll pull you forward. So those are your forward and back buttons work very similar in other applications as well. Now, while you're in different applications, mainly on Safari or on the internet here, you can actually zoom in or out using two fingers and pinching finger and thumb or two fingers I usually use two fingers like this hover over whatever you want to zoom into and then just kind of pinch outwards to zoom in pinch inwards to zoom out again you can use your finger and your thumb I have trouble with it so finger and thumb works the same like so whatever's your personal preference now accessing the app switcher or multitask you're going to take three fingers i usually use these three fingers and you're going to kind of swipe up pausing and that'll bring it up just like when you pull it up from the bottom and you kind of pause you see how it brings up our uh, multitask same thing three fingers we're going to pull up pause it'll bring up multitask and we can access all our applications that are open Another option is to actually pinch four fingers together like this and kind of pausing in the middle. It's hard to do because this trackpad is so small. I can't even get it to work. Other things start happening, but it is a four finger pinch and you're kind of pausing. But there we go. It is tough to do, so I just recommend using the three fingers and pause. Now, while you have open applications, you can actually switch between them just by using three fingers and going left and right, just like the back and forward options. But this time, three fingers, we're going to go this way, this way. And you can see all the open applications I can switch between going left and right. Three fingers, very simple, very convenient as well. 
Now from your home screen, you can actually use two fingers and pull up the today view. If you pull to the right, you'll see it pops up with some options that you can utilize as well. Keep in mind, you will have to have this enabled in your settings for it to work and to close the today view, just swipe to the left. Accessing the search is usually a pull down on the screen. Now you can use two fingers and pull down on the trackpad and you'll get that same option to search. You can click in the search bar, start using the keyboard as well to type, and you can search for what you're looking for. Now a secondary click is also available on this trackpad. So if you are in an application, for example here, and we wanted to right click on, let's say the learn more option, we could use two fingers and we can access the secondary click. So we'll press with two fingers and now we get options like open, open in the background, copy, share, etc. And depending on what application you're using, you'll be able to access whatever that secondary click would do. So just play around with it within different apps and see what options are available. Now the trackpad has settings that you can change. So we'll open up our settings application. We want to make sure that we go to the general tab here and then we're going to look for trackpad. And you can see that first you can control the speed of the trackpad. So that's just how fast it's going to move across. If we change it to go down all the way, you'll see how many times I have to swipe across to get across. And if I go completely to the end where it's really fast, it's barely moving and I can get across the whole screen. So I, again, just like with my MacBook Pro, I leave it a little bit past the halfway mark. It's the most convenient for me. Next option is the natural scrolling. So when we scroll here with two fingers, you can see that pulling up actually pulls this down and takes you down. If you turn this off, now pulling up is taking you up and pulling down will take you down. So it's totally your choice. I used to use it without the natural. I do now use natural. It's just more convenient, feels more natural in general as well. Tap to click, this is a preference, so it's turning the trackpad into a tappable trackpad. You can use one finger and tap to open various things. So let's say I go back to our home screen here and I want to open the clock app. I could just tap on the trackpad now and it'll open it for me. The click will still work at the same time, but uh, if you do prefer to have the tap, you can enable that as well. The one thing I find with the tap to click is that you'll find that maybe if you're just scrolling around, you might tap and open things. So I turn that off. Two finger secondary click, you can just turn that off. So if you don't want to have the secondary or right click functionality, it'll be turned off. I leave that on as well. It's always good to have a little bit more functionality in general. And with that, we're going to actually move now to some of the keyboard options that you have because there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts that you can use within the iPad and they're actually very convenient. So the first one, obviously, anytime you're in any application and you want to go home, you can use the command and H button if you press them together. So we'll put command H and it'll take you home. And that works great in any application. The next is the search option. So command and the space bar, it's going to open up your search. And then to close that as well is command space bar. To switch between some of your most recently opened applications, you can press command and tab. It'll bring up the applications on screen. You can then use tab to scroll across. You can also use the arrow keys and it'll allow you to swipe across as well. To open that application, just release and the app will open. Taking a screenshot is also pretty important. So opening up Safari here, just locate what you're looking for and you want to press command shift three at the same time. It'll take your screenshot. You can then click on the screenshot to edit it any way you'd like. You can trash it and then click done and it'll save it to your photos or your files. Now, while in applications that don't show your dock, you can press command options and D. It'll bring up the dock at the bottom as well. And a quick tip while you're on your home screen, you can always hold command. It'll pop up with all the shortcuts that are available to you from that section. So you can try this out in different applications as well. For example, in Safari, if you do it, there is a whole bunch that you can utilize within Safari. So zoom command plus and just keep pressing on plus or minus to just continuously make it smaller. Press and hold command again. You can see that there is the actual size. So as you're minusing and plus, if you want to get back to the actual size, just hold command and press zero. It'll bring you back to the exact screen that it should be to fit best. So rather than go through all of these options here, you can just take a look. Also press command on your own and you'll be able to use any one of these shortcut keys within Safari. Now let's get into customizing the keyboard shortcuts. And once again, we're going to open the settings application for this and you want to navigate to the accessibility section. 
Then we're going to scroll down to where it says keyboards. When you click on this, there's an option on the top called Full Access Keyboard, and it's going to allow you to use an external keyboard to control your iPad. And in this case, we're going to be using the actual Magic Keyboard that is connected. So we'll click on that and turn on Full Access Keyboard. Once you've done that, you can click Command, and it'll show you all of the custom shortcuts and commands that you can use, and you can see how they all work. Now, if you wanted to change any of them, for example, Help, Tab H, if we click on it, you'll see that we can clear it cancel or done, we'll click clear, it now does not have any shortcut that we can use. Let's say we wanted to change it, we'll just change it back to tab H, we'll press tab H, it appears there, we'll click done, and now we've created that. So when we do press tab H, you'll see that it brings up all of those options that are based around the help. To exit it, it would be tab H again. We go back into our settings and scroll down further you'll see that there's other options here that don't have any gestures at all so swiping up if you wanted to create a gesture that would swipe up you can then set that as well just to show you we'll click on it let's just say swipe up is going to be command clash and then we'll say done now if we wanted to swipe up let's just go to our website here and we'll press command and our slash and you can see how it swipes upwards every time we press it. You do have to kind of hold on the actual button. So hold command and then hold the button you need to press for about a second and it activates it. But it's cool. You'll be able to utilize so many more features and really be a little bit more productive with everything you're doing. Now with that being said, there are other options. So back into our general tab here. If we scroll to where it says keyboard this time and we click on hardware keyboards. Now you can set what language the keyboard's going to be, auto capitalization, auto correction, shortcuts, and modifier keys. So if you go to modifier keys, you can change what they do. And as you can see, my globe key here, which is located at the bottom left, I've set it to be an escape button. And the reason I did this is because in some areas, escape is just useful, and you'll notice that this keyboard does not have an escape button. So for example, if I was opening up my search here, I could just press the escape button, it'll escape. You'll have to play around where it works best, but it's nice to have that extra option there as well. All right, now let's get into some tips and tricks that we can use, and the first one we'll take a look at is in our settings application click accessibility and then we want to scroll down to pointer control and we'll click on that and this is going to allow you to customize how this pointer or cursor is going to look and act within the iPad and on this keyboard so the first one is the contrast so just take note of how this trackpad pointer actually looks it's a gray circle if we turn that on you'll see it's a darker gray I traditionally leave it off you can also click on automatically hide pointer. So by default, it'll automatically hide within two seconds. You can set this to hide longer or shorter depending on your personal preference as well. The pointer size, you can customize this to be as large or as small as you'd like. When you pass the halfway mark, you'll notice that a lighter gray circle also appears in the middle of the cursor. So I usually just leave mine around here. It's not a big deal. Pointer animations, so this is going to allow the pointer to animate and adapt to different elements on the screen. You can turn that off, I leave it on. The trackpad inertia is a little bit weird, like it's uh, basically when you drag, it does kind of just pull away, so it's not instant with your finger, it kind of moves a little bit after you let go. If you turn that off, it's going to be a precise moving trackpad. You'll see as soon as I let go, it stops, there is no drag with it. So, I mean, I'm stopping almost before the animation and it's kind of pulling a little bit more. Hard to explain, but you can play around with it and you'll know what it's all about. Scrolling speed, so how fast it scrolls, so up and down like this. So just like with the trackpad speed, if you set this to fast, you'll be scrolling a lot faster than you would if you put it all the way down to the slow, where now I'm scrolling up and down pretty slow and you can just set it to that line right there, which is the default. Moving on, we'll open up our Safari once again, and let's just go over a link. Anytime you see a link, you can peek behind it and see what's going on. You can take one finger, press and hold. It'll give you a preview of the page that's there. You can click on it to open it. You also have other options on the right side that you can access. And if you would like to hide the preview, you can. It'll just show you these options without the preview. And you can always exit just by clicking anywhere else away from that screen. Now I did show you a little bit earlier that I changed up my keyboard a little bit here. So I'm gonna go back to keyboard and we're gonna to go to hardware keyboard. 
and we'll go to the modifier keys. So I did change my globe key to an escape button, but if you leave it at your globe option, it has a, a purpose. So for example, if we open our notes here, if we click, we don't have really anywhere to access our emojis if we're typing. You can click on the globe and hold, and it'll bring up all your emojis so you can access them. If you change that to, let's say, your escape button, you won't have that option anymore. So it's totally your choice. You might want to change up one of the other options, so that way you can still access your emojis if you click on the globe. See, right now I have no emojis. So choose what you like. I traditionally am not using my iPad with emojis, so I don't need that on. Now, if I've missed anything that you know, please let me know in the comments below. It'll help me. It'll also help everybody watching this video at the same time, and I'll really appreciate it. I hope you guys found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be responding to all the comments on this video. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell notification button to be notified when I post new videos. Many more to come in the very near future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.